Detached housing across Vancouver is now firmly planted in buyer market conditions. If you are looking to purchase, you need to watch this video right until the end, even if you're looking to sell because there is some information that you need to digest here. We're gonna be going into all the recent data from August and the advanced statistics that I pay for to show you where the winners and losers are across Vancouver's west side, Vancouver's east side, and where you need to operate in, whether you're a buyer, a seller, or an investor. We did finally see a stop to the growth of inventory essentially across all areas across Metro Vancouver. We've seen seven consecutive months since December of a run-up of inventory that has now stopped with this recent August data. We have this data in, we're going to be showing you exactly what I am talking about, but there are some important pieces for you and your due diligence, especially with this upcoming fall market. Today at time of filming on September 4th, the Bank of Canada dropped its policy rate a third time. And now we are looking at three quarters of a point drop since midway through the year. So how is this going to play out across September and the fall market? You're going to have to watch and wait and see my name is Kyle Mark, your Vancouver Realtor. And whether you're looking to buy, sell, invest, or relocate to my beautiful city, Vancouver, book that strategy call with me. It's in the description below or shoot me a text. I'm super easy to get a hold of and I am here to help. As mentioned off the top, we have another joyous day with rates are dropping and there's gonna be more by the end of the year as well. In my previous video, I really broke down some of the economic data. So we're not gonna be going into mortgages and inflation numbers. You can check that out on the previous video but today I'm going to give you the numbers that you need for medium pricing days on market seller marketing conditions and all that fun stuff I'm also going to bring up the numbers from the Fraser Valley so you can see not only how Vancouver's west and east markets compare to Vancouver as a whole but how they compare to the Fraser Valley as well so what we're going to do here I'm going to bring up my screen and you know the drill here we have the last three years and this is medium price points in the blue this is the Fraser Valley region, the gray, Vancouver West, the yellow, Vancouver East, and green, the whole of Greater Vancouver. And what you can see here, pretty much from a year to year, there's not really any change. In fact, across all three platforms in Vancouver, we've actually seen a drop in price point with Vancouver West sinking 6.1% year over year. At this point last year, Vancouver's West Side, the average house was just over 4 million. It has now dropped to just under 3.8. Fraser Valley has seen a little bit of a kick up of 1.5%, but if we look at these numbers now, the average pricing for a single detached home across Vancouver as a whole is now sitting at 1.8 1 million dropping 3.6 percent here in the green in the yellow vancouver's east side a drop of 4.4 percent year over year 1.865 million your average price for a detached home uh, we went over these vancouver west numbers th just under 3.8 million for vancouver's west side you are buying at a little bit of a discount one compared to 2023 but if you look back even two years ago you are still doing pretty well uh, as there's been some quite significant changes from that just over that three million dollar mark on vancouver's west side here compared to just under 3.8 here in 2024 and rounding out in the fraser valley your average detached home is sitting at 1.437 million dollars so as we can see with these numbers here there shouldn't be a huge surprise that there has been in fact a little bit of a drop down with these numbers on a year-to-year -year basis we know that these interest rates have been causing a lot of pain for people we also know that uninsured mortgages which is needed to facilitate the financing of detached properties uh, the fixed rates just haven't been there and the variable rates haven't been there for people to act continue to get the bank of canada tinkering with rates and i did read an article uh, just recently how the big banks because solds have just essentially just stagnated here the big banks are wanting to improve business and we're going to start to see some rate wars and we could actually see uninsured mortgages sitting at under four percent by the end of this year and Uninsured mortgages, like I said, is anything where you are needing more than a million dollars of lending. Like I said, in this landscape of the detached market, this is where we're going to want to look at these rates. Lenders and big banks and lenders will do their advertising around insured mortgages because that's where they're going to be able to advertise their lowest price point in terms of interest. But that is not going to apply to you if you need financing that's above that million dollar mark. So keep that in the back of your mind when you are looking at some of these promotional products. They're likely always centered around 
insured mortgages, you need to focus on uninsured mortgages. So let's jump into the sales data just so you can have a little context of what I was talking about when we were talking about these potential rate wars coming in from the big banks. And you can see here right off the top, Vancouver's east side, Vancouver's west side, significant drops in sales year to year. 41.6% drop in sales on Vancouver's east with just 45 detached sales in the whole of August. Vancouver's west side only saw 47, which was a decrease of 28.8% as well. Uh, the whole of Vancouver uh, saw a decrease of 12.5% and then Fraser Valley saw a 4.6% reduction in sales at 412. So it doesn't really matter where you're looking, the whole of the Metro Vancouver area into the Fraser Valley, they just have not been able to produce the sales needed. And that's why this inventory has continued to plug upwards and why banks are starting to have to make some moves to attract people to come back into the marketplace so they can start with more mortgage originations so that they can move business forward as well. When we dive into total inventory and we can see that there's been a continued raise year over year as well. And there's some pretty big significant numbers other than Vancouver West. You can see that greater Vancouver as a whole 20.6% year to year increase in inventory. You can see on Vancouver's east side a 22.3% increase year over year with 571 units. Vancouver's West just a 7.8% increase, 647 detached units. And then with the Fraser Valley, 13.2% increase year over year with 3,655 units of total inventory with this recent monthly data. You have a lot of selection here, no matter where you are looking at. And these are some of the things that you're wanting to look at as a buyer when you see that sales are down inventory and total inventory is up and as they get into the next stat package here with buyer conditions being in the single digits now there is i think a small window of opportunity over the next couple months for you as a buyer to get a good deal there still is an inventory crunch when it comes to good inventory good inventory is still selling quite quickly and we can look at that just with with the days on market but if you are not super picky if it's not your forever home and you're wanting to get uh, a nice move into the marketplace you should be getting in touch with your realtor. Hopefully it's me. My information is in the description below. So as we get into these days on market numbers, you can see here on the right hand side, there has been some significant increases uh, for the most part with days on market. But keep that in mind. We're still, no matter where you're looking at in the Fraser Valley, Vancouver as a whole, Vancouver East, Vancouver West, we're still under one month to sell a home in conditions where interest rates are extremely high and we have had the most amount of inventory that we've seen in quite some time. So what does it look like for you as a seller if you are having reasonable expectations and what it's going to take for you to move your home? So with Greater Vancouver as a whole, 22 days on market, an increase of 37.5% year over year. So it went from 16 to 22 days, right on par with where we were seeing in 2022. Uh, Vancouver's east side, 26 days up 116%. Yes, that sounds quite dramatic, but I mean, you're going from 12 to 26 days of market, still staying under four weeks. Vancouver West actually had a slight reduction going from 23 days of market to 21 days on market on Vancouver's West side. And the Fraser Valley sitting at 24 days, a 50% increase from 16. But for the most part, you can see that these days on market numbers are pretty much identical from 2022 all the way into 2024 here. So what I want to do now is bring up some MLS data so that you can exactly see when we're dealing with these median price points, what this price point can get you as a seller. How does your home compare to one of these listings? So what I have for you here is starting on Vancouver's east side. And we know that the median price point is just sitting under 1.9 million. So we have Vancouver East here between 1.86 million, 1.9 million. You have 33 options. So let's take a search here and then I'm going to pull up the map search so you can see where these homes are located and uh, you can see that essentially all over Vancouver's east side you have options almost in this diagonal line right here all the way from boundary getting close to North Vancouver all the way close to the Fraser River here. So what I want to do is get back to the criteria and I'm going to bring up something that is most recently listed so that we can see exactly what we are looking at. So if we can get as close to the median price point as possible, let's go with this one here, 2745 East 5th Avenue. So this one is located Renfrew, Vancouver East. It's a 67 year old home. It has just been listed on market for 1.895 million, just over 4,000 square foot lot mountain views here, three bedroom, two bath, 
and let me see 1878 square feet and uh, it does have a suite so it has two kitchens here so this one's listed by Keller Williams and uh, the description here is an incredible opportunity to own a beautiful home wonderfully maintained and move in ready so let's see how move in ready this one is looking at some photos here so it has the blue exterior something that is definitely post-war era and yeah, I would agree. It looks like it's been maintained quite well. Uh, it does definitely need some updating, but this is a, a good indication for you. It's got a nice patio. Um, what you can get for that $1.9 million mark. Like I said, this one's located in Renfrew. And as we zoom out here, just in case you are wondering where that is, it's located just north of Broadway and uh, to the west of Boundary. So you're getting into Burnaby in here, uh, but there are some nice pockets in here, and this is what you can look at for something that is in that medium price point. It is a 67-year-old home that needs some updating. It does have a mortgage helper, and this one does have open houses this weekend. So if you are interested maybe in something like this, give me a shout and uh, we can set something up. So if we flip this script here now, and now we want to go on to Vancouver's west side, and we want to see uh, and keep in line with the median price point, and the median price point is sitting at just under 3.8 million. So if we bump this up here, 3.8, and uh, let's get this at 375. We have a total of 12 options, and uh, let's look at the map on these guys. And there's uh, you know a little bit more of a spread with the bulk of them being really close to Vancouver's east side. You have three options here that are in the Kitsilano area. So as we get into something that is most recently listed, so we have this one here. 18 days on market. So this one's 3368 West 12th Avenue in Kitsilano, 3780 million, essentially right on par with the medium price point. So this is a nine year old home. It is on just over a 4,000 square foot lot, so very similar to the lot size of Vancouver's East. Six bedroom, six bathroom, 2,861 square feet. It has two kitchens, so you have a mortgage helper here. This is listed by LDG Realty. This one says, welcome to this newer, beautiful home located in the prestigious, popular West Side area. So let's take a couple photos here and see what you can get. Obviously, this home is a lot newer than the other one. Uh, you have you know extended height ceilings. There's really not any work that needs to be done here whatsoever. That other home on Vancouver's east side, you know, you're going to have to spend upwards of six figures to get that uh, into modern day shape. Here, some of the finishes are a little bit dated, but it, it looks like it's definitely workable. Here's the suite. The suite also looks like it has elevated ceiling heights here, which is a nice touch. And uh, yeah, that is what you are looking at for something that is right on par with those median averages. This is what you've been waiting for, the winners and losers on Vancouver's east side and west side. We're gonna start with Vancouver East. We're gonna give you a complete in-depth overview and the price bands and the areas that you wanna focus in as a buyer and seller. So let's kick this off and just state right off the top, we are strictly in single digit buyer market conditions at an 8% sales ratio right now. Homes are selling on average 100% of list price. And if we go to this 13 month market trend here in the black, you can see that we've had two consecutive months of price drops where just two months ago in June, the average price point was just under 2.1 million. We are now under 1.9. So there's about a $200,000 difference here in price point. This is the red line here where we're talking about this inventory increase. And now we've seen a drop here from July to August just by 20, but I'm hoping this is the extent of inventory levels that we've seen in July. Sales were actually way down. They dropped in half from July to August, going from 90 to 46. And with these inventory numbers, 551 for the month of August. We can see that the most active price band is between 1.25 and $1.5 million. And buyers best bets in the 2.75 to $3 million range in Collingwood and up to two bedroom properties for a two bedroom home that's going to be a very small house obviously and probably one that is very old and needs to be knocked down as a seller if you're in Hastings Sunrise and three to four bedroom properties that is where you're wanting to operate uh, we can see that month to month variance of inventory was down four percent solds were down 49 percent sale price was down five percent and days on market increased 25 percent to 25 days on market on Vancouver's east side which we already highlighted when we look at for a buyer where are some of these 
areas that are really having problems and Collingwood has been that area month over month over month. Look at this, 1%, just one sale and 99 inventory, but that is clouded by the amount of land assemblies that are happening there. Grandview Woodland, 3%, one sale, 29 options. Knight Street, one sale, 57 options. Main Street, one sale, 25 options. So there's significant issues here and downward pressure in these low single digit markets such as Knight Street at 2%, Main Street at 4%, Collingwood at 1%, Renfrew at 6%. On the flip side, where are some areas that are looking like some healthy competition, a good place to sell if you're in Hastings Sunrise at 41%, that's firmly in seller market conditions. And other than that, we can see Fraser has dropped a little bit to 19%. Fraser has always been doing very well. That is strong balance market conditions. If we look at price bands, we know that 1.25 to 1.5 is the most popular. It's sitting at 57%, 1.5 to 1.75% at 21% is still seller market conditions. If you're looking for some of those deals between 1.75 to 2 million, you're sitting at 6%. And then that 2.75 to $3 million mark at 2% is where you're going to find some value here. We also know that we're looking at the layout of a home. It doesn't really matter where you're looking at. This is all muddled pretty closely together, um, sitting at an average at 8%, no matter what you're looking at for a specific household. It doesn't really matter with these numbers. It's more based on the community and the price band. Kicking it over to Vancouver's west side and the detached market here. We know that uh, it's sitting at 7% sales ratio. So firm buyer market conditions. If we look at the 13 month market trend line here, we've actually seen a jump up month to month from 3.4 million to $3.79 million. But keep in mind, there wasn't a lot of sales data with that homes are selling on average 2% below list price on Vancouver's west side. Most active price band between 2.25 and 2.5 million in the 24% seller market condition range. Buyers best bets, homes 7.5 million and above, which was the same case as last month's market report, South Granville and up to two bedroom properties. And as a seller, if you're selling homes in Southwest Marine and three to four bedroom properties, that is what the market is really getting themselves into right now. Uh, the inventory like we can see it dropped from 661 to 630 so it came down uh, 31 units and sales also dropped as well but you can see with these blue marks here sales have essentially just flatlined for the last 13 months inventory has had a little bit of a yo-yo coming back down and pricing has stayed pretty much the same throughout the 13 months as well if we look at a little bit more of the details inventory down 5% sold down 30% sale price did jump up 11% and uh, days on market is sitting at 21 days on Vancouver's west side. Areas of opportunity. So on average, 7%, I mean, there's really opportunity in most of these places here. Um, South Granville, two sales with 82 options at 2%. That's an area I would focus in on. And Marpole, 3%, which is one sale and 35 options. On the flip side, the only area that's doing well right now would be Southwest Marine. That's just in seller market conditions at 22%. Everything else across the board, essentially on Vancouver, West side is very weak. When we go to price bands, we can see that if you are dealing in that 2 million upwards to 2.75 million mark, you're getting into strong balance conditions into seller market conditions. Uh, and then the price band between four to $4.5 million is very competitive right now too, sitting just in those seller market conditions, but anywhere above $4.5 million, you're going to have a lot of options. There is very little movement in those areas everywhere from you know in from that 4.5 million all the way up to 20 plus million or whatever the highest listed price on Vancouver's west side is I mean there's only been what, eight sales in that in that environment and you can see that there's hundreds of options in there so if you have some money you're looking for a more forever home there is some good opportunities sitting above 4.5 million dollars and what's nice is that the the community areas here are giving you favorable buyer market conditions as well. Sometimes these price bands will allocate to buyer market conditions, but a lot of the higher end or the more noteworthy locations and communities are still in quite competitive marketplaces. That's just not the case. There's a lot of things lining up here for buyers.
requires, these are the conditions that you're wanting to look into where you have a choice of community, you have a choice of price band, ideally looking at something that's been on market for a while to get a good deal. And then, you know, in a few years, you should be getting a bunch of equity back into your pocket. So whether you're looking for your forever home, a building lot, or just getting into the market, whether you're on Vancouver's east side or west side on the detached market, you do have some options here um, moving forward through the rest of the year, I believe. So there you have it, everybody. We've gone through the data. We've given you the winners, the losers. I've even brought up some data from the MLS to show you exactly what these median price points can get you in terms of a single family detached home. Buyer market conditions, if you're a buyer and you are continuing to wait for these interest rates to drop, you got another one today at time of filming, September 4th. Book a call with me in the description, whether you're looking to buy or sell, let's have a consultation. Let's see how we can partner together to get you the best result, no matter if you're looking to buy or sell. Uh, you can also shoot me a text. I'm super easy to get a hold of. So my name is Kyle Mark, your Vancouver realtor. And until the next video where we're going to be focused on the attached market, make sure you check out my last video where I am giving you a little bit more inflation and mortgage numbers as well to keep you informed in this Vancouver market. Until I see you on the next one, my name is Kyle Mark, your Vancouver realtor. Take care.